So welcome to lovely and sunny Miami, Florida, and we're here with Tommy behind the camera. Say hi, Tommy. Hi, guys. Reviewing this, the brand new 2020 Mini Cooper SE, and E stands for electric. And in this video, we're gonna, of course, take it for a ride. We're gonna show you all about it. And we're gonna give you one number that I think will determine whether you will be buying this vehicle or not. And at the end, we're gonna let you know whether you should buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it. But first, before we do any of that, Tommy, give them a walk around. So this is the 2020 Cooper SE. The Cooper S means it's a sporty model and the E means it's electrified. And I sat down with the engineer behind this vehicle to learn a little bit about how they built it. Basically, they took a lot of the components out of the i3 and applied it to the mini architecture. So the whole front drive unit is basically the same as the i3. The charger is basically the same as the i3. The componentry that makes it run is all basically the same. So let's take a look at some of the cool features in the front that make the mini electric tick. So the electric motor developed 184 horsepower and just about 200 pound feet of torque, but there's no front trunk, right? Yeah, there is no trunk because, well, this started out as a regular mini, unlike something like a Tesla, which started out as an electric car. So what you have is basically, well, a big cover. Yeah, so you can see here, yeah, you get, you get a big cover <laughs> and that's about it. Now the battery capacity on this, oh, are you gonna try to lift it? I'm not gonna try to lift it. I don't wanna get myself electrocuted. What's the battery capacity? <laughs> the battery capacity is just 32 and a bit kilowatt hours. But they don't give you access to all that, do they, Tommy? No, they actually only give you access to 28, I think it's 28.9 kilowatt hours. And therein lies the rub, because unfortunately, that means that you only get 110 miles of range. Now. Mini will tell you that that's okay because this car will be a second or even third car for many people so they won't be driving it across country but nevertheless 110 when Teslas are getting 250 even as much as over 300 it's is a mini yeah it's it's mini with mini range but show them the charging point and how it charges this is your standard CCS type plug here so on the top you've got your J1772 AC plug and then on the bottom you have DC fast charging capability up to 50 kilowatts which isn't all that quick but it should be enough on this car for a couple of reasons well wait 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 isn't all that quick is an understatement i mean a tesla and the porsche will charge it three or four times that rate yeah. but it's not that big of a deal because it's a small battery so mini says it will charge on a fast charger from empty to 80 percent in about 35 minutes which but, is super fast but how long if you want to go 100 percent well it's over an hour yeah. but nobody's ever going from zero to 100 that's on a fast charger yeah sure. no one's going zero to 100 percent let's go on the back so in the back you actually lose no cargo capacity because the battery lives underneath the vehicle once again largely the same pack as an i3 but in a t configuration take a look at this this is really cool there's actually two different positions for the seats so here's your standard position and then if i just scoot that forward i can actually raise up this little additional latch and there you go so there you can see there's two positions, which means I can store kind of larger items here. Hey, why don't you go around and show them how much room I have back here? Mm, probably not. <laughs> probably not a whole lot would be yeah, my bet. Now on the outside, I think the coolest part of the Mini Cooper SE has to be these wheels, which are asymmetrical. There's a couple different trims. This is a high-end trim. Um, there's like more of a base wheel, but I love these wheels because they look like a little charging plug. How are you doing back here? Well, I do love the second sunroof, right? There's two sunroofs, uh, but I'd have to pretty much be headless and legless at 6'2 to feel comfortable back here. You know, for a short trip, like you're going to lunch with your coworkers, it's fine, but you know, as a long-term backseat cruiser for tall people, it's probably not gonna work out great. Well, sure. Yeah, and then of course, watch this. It's like, you know, as far as I know, there's no four, oh, four door coming. Oh, it's not that bad. Oh, my. It's not that bad. My hips are a little too wide, Tommy. I think well, you're I need missing, to... You're missing the best part of the interior here, though, and that's the front front seat room because Mini's owned, of course, by BMW. The, uh, Germans tend to be pretty tall, which means there's a lot of room here in the front seat of the Mini. Yeah, and this is built in Oxford. On the same line as the other Minis, actually. It is on the same Mini. So let's uh, start it up and let's take them for a ride and see how uh, this thing dries because the great thing about minis and electric minis is instantaneous torque. Why don't you close your door so it doesn't beep and then uh, you'll note that yellow is now the color of electricity when it comes to minis. So all these yellow accents, you know, rear view mirror, 
on the wheels that's showing you that it's electric and the cool thing is I do have a little heads-up display so watch this when I start it up I get a funky noise and ooh, it's like Star Wars yeah, it's the combiner heads-up display, but on the inside the electric mini is basically the same as any other mini. You've got your standard ring here on the center, your standard mini infotainment system. You do have yellow accents across, but other than that, it's, it's pretty much the same you, you come to find. And you do have these kind of funky drive modes. Watch the mini because that's where it gets interesting. There it is. Look, the mini changes with racing stripes down the hood. Yeah, for sure. The other thing I like is right here, I want to show them the uh, central display, the dashboard. Yep, change it low gen braking and high gen regenerative braking and basically that means that i can drive it with one pedal like you would a tesla or if you like driving traditional cars you can put it in low gen regen which means basically it cruises and you have to use the brakes but the rest of the inside is basically the same yeah I, you know it's a nice place to be i do love these toggle switches mini has always done that but uh it's a cool design feature so should we tell take it for a ride uh yeah let's let's take it for a spin and see Ooh, how it does backup camera Ooh, it's actually a good backup camera it doesn't look like a potato you hear that sound i don't know if you guys can hear it but it sounds like kind of a cross between a cuisinart and one of those star wars uh ground cruiser things you know those little sleds that they had in the mandalorian for all you Star Wars fans, let me know in the comments below what those things are called. They're so, really cool. So the center um, screen is a little bit different, of course. You've got your uh, battery capacity from 0 to 100%. Then you've got your power usage meter. But other than that, it's basically the same interior as a Mini, which is a good thing. The great thing about electric vehicles, of course, is instantaneous torque. So let me give it a little bit of a squirt of electrons. Whoa! Whoa. Whoa. That's fun. So that is fun. Mini says 0 to 100 kilometers in 7.3 seconds. If you translate that to 60 miles an hour, it's probably around 7 seconds. And the great thing about it is if you're from someplace like Miami, it's going to be just as fast as if you're someplace like we are in Colorado, right? Electric cars aren't affected by altitude. I think around the city, the Cooper SE actually feels pretty zippy compared to a standard Cooper S. It's got a little bit less horsepower, 189 versus 184, uh, but torque is pretty impressive on any electric vehicle because that's what electric motors excel at. Yeah, now I've got it in sport mode, and minis of course are known for their, oh, it's a cliche, goat-like, or is it go-kart-like? Yeah, I think it's go-kart, I don't it's think it's go goat. I think it's goat? No. Oh, I got that wrong. And never mind, go-kart-like handling. <laughs> It is a little rough, Tommy. It is a little firm. No. <laughs> but I, I'm being funny. But honestly, it does feel kind of the miniest of all the minis. And that's because not only is it not that much heavier than a standard gasoline powered one, 150 kilograms or 3,000 pounds altogether. The great thing about that weight is it's down low, giving you a lower center of gravity, which makes it much more fun to drive. Top speed is reduced, so. so it's electronically limited to 150k or 95 or, miles an hour yeah about 90 some miles an hour yeah but really in the u.s you don't frequently go above 75 80 so <laughs> yeah i mean if you're doing 95 you're probably burning electrons at a prodigious rate and that 110 miles of range is going to go down very quickly but keep in mind you know this is a german owned company so they do drive these on the autobahn so i'm sure it's been sorted for high speed driving yeah, absolutely. Now, we did tease you at the beginning about one impressive number, and that is the price, which is just a tick under $30,000 MSRP for the base car, which is actually well equipped with the high-end lights and some of the options, but there's a catch. But, yep, that's not the impressive number. The impressive number is $22,500 because you still get your $7,500 federal tax credit, so realistically, you can get it for $22,500 plus whatever state. Uh, incentives or credits you have and potentially you could get this car for as low as twenty thousand dollars which in my mind tommy is a mini bargain yeah i mean minis nowadays have gotten more and more and more expensive and you know to be able to have one for about twenty thousand dollars is, is a good value yeah for sure especially one that feels like it's got the heart and soul of a bmw which it does what well, it does i mean maybe a little bit too much bmw the fact of the matter is this is still a gasoline vehicle converted to electricity this is not a ground up electric car which means it does have compromises like there's no front trunk um, it's still front wheel drive right uh, but at the same time they are able to build this on the same line as a standard mini which i imagine saves them some costs 
Yeah, yeah. I, I just feel like uh, it's an electric car bargain at even twenty two five hundred. When you think about the fact that a Tesla Model Three, uh, the base vehicle is going to be how much? Forty. Yeah, half the price basically. Half the range too. Half the range, but half the price. And yeah, electric cars are all about range. It's like real estate location, location, location. This is range, range, range. So keeping that in mind, let's go outside and let them know whether they should buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it, at least in our opinion. Okay. All right. Buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it. What's your call? Well, I actually really like it. I think it's exceptional value. It's super fun to drive. It's very quick, but I kind of feel like in three, four years from now, the battery technology is going to be a step up from where it is today. So I'm going to say lease it. Uh, enjoy the affordability, enjoy the tax credits, but then move on at the end of the lease. Yeah, I say buy it, man. 22.5, I would buy it. It's a great big not mini electric car bargain and do me a favor in the comments below what is that is it a skimmer what are those things called that the star wars guys drive that kind of fly over the <laughs> i'm just curious I, I i'm really curious so there you have it um i think it's a thumbs up for this car and uh come back to tflcar.com for more news views and what else tommy real world mini cooper electric reviews